Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Courage Cody Podcast. I don't know if you noticed, maybe maybe one, two, all two of you may have noticed, but last week I did not put out a new episode on the podcast. I did not plan to not put out an episode, but I ended up getting sick with COVID. So that was super fun. Um, <laughs> it was a pretty miserable existence for the last week or so. I am mostly better now. I just have the whole nose congestion, sinus congestion still happening, so that's fun. Uh, I feel like I've spent the last, I mean, it's been over a week now, but uh, as soon as I started feeling better with COVID, my back started flaring up, and right before I got COVID, um, my shoulder started acting up again. So it's been a a weird week for me mentally, I'm not going to (laughs) lie, especially, you know, as a bodybuilder and you have goals and you, you... I've been working around the shoulder injury for for quite some time now. And I was actually scheduled for surgery um, a few weeks after my last show. But considering I qualified for nationals, I ended up canceling the surgery uh, with, you know, support and recommendation from my surgeon. He was just like, yeah, no, that's too important. Let's just, let's push it back and let's do what we can to keep you going. So that means cortisone shots. Uh, so I've been getting cortisone shots on my shoulder like every three months or so. And the problem with that is, you know, there is a limit to how many you can do with that because there is a risk for it weakening the soft tissues around it, uh, weakening the tendons. Um, so potentially you could end up worse if you push it too hard. So course i've had had anxiety about that but my cortisone shot wore off so i made an appointment with my doctor uh just being like how long can i go on like this like how long can i just get the cortisone shots and uh you know stay out of surgery and he couldn't really give me a direct answer he's like you could be fine you know you could do this for years without any uh bad side effects or you know (laughs) you could have one more and and have uh, a tendon rupture or something along those lines uh so now that I talked to him, we kind of decided it would be a good idea just for my own peace of mind to get an updated MRI since it's been a couple years since I had one, um, just to see if there's any new developments. Um, because if it's worse or if there's anything that's like very obviously, you know, getting worse, then I might have to opt for surgery just so I can prolong my shoulder joint. Uh, you know, in the long term, I've always got to think long term. Of course, you know, I would love to go to nationals and, uh, you know, put that on, you know, my bucket list, uh, uh, check that off my bucket list. But, um, you know, if I want to keep competing, I have to have a healthy shoulder and I don't want to blow out my shoulder. I, you know, if I, if I don't have to, bad thing is like surgery is, it's like a six month recovery. He's thinking that, Um, I've got a labrum tear uh, towards like the back of my shoulder Uh, that's causing some instability so yeah that would be a pretty uh, pretty long recovery that I'm trying to avoid Uh, so I just decided to opt for the MRI but in turn I have to uh, hold off on the cortisone shot and I wasn't able to get an appointment for an MRI until May 1st so um, it's been a lot and you know even when i was able to get back in the gym after being sick i still had like the back and shoulder pain and i just there's just some times where you you almost just start laughing of like wow i'm just really uncomfortable (laughs) like i'm old now and this is probably just life and you know fun times but i guess it's more like life of an older bodybuilding athlete older athlete whatever you got arthritis you got to train a little bit differently things just change as you age unfortunately and I'm aware of this um you know but there's definitely some something going on with the shoulder that I've known about for a while so we'll see what the MRI shows and I'll keep you posted not that y'all want to know um but hey that's that's my reality right now just so you know (laughs) I've got a lot of anxiety a lot of discomfort And uh, when it comes to the back, I've got some bulging discs. I've got a new one. Uh, It's not a new one. It's not something you want to have that's new. Like new things are cool, except when it comes to bulging discs and injuries. Uh, But um, my insurance is giving me a hard time um, 
trying to get some well first of all number one option would be prp for the bulging disc but unfortunately insurance doesn't cover it and it's like twenty five hundred dollars so i'm not gonna go that route right now uh but cortisone shots you know insurance uh keeps denying my ability to get a cortisone shot so we're just kind of playing playing things by ear and uh taking some advil and trying to get through through everything but anyways didn't mean to start this off as a debbie downer but speaking of discomfort <laughs> i wanted to talk about bodybuilding prep what to expect and the reality of it especially if you've never competed before so if you're someone who's looking to compete i'm going to give you like an unfiltered idea of what to expect and what to expect you know from a coach or you know how i coach uh when it comes to prep you know every coach is different so just because i do one do something one way doesn't mean like another coach is going to do it the same way but i can talk about the differences in coaching how i coach uh versus coaching someone who's just a lifestyle client or just a, a weight loss client or etc um so on that note i always say there's two versions of me there's coach cody and then there is prep coach cody they are two different two different personalities um i mean they're both decently kind uh but the prep coach cody is going to be a lot harder um because i expect more right i'm going to treat you like an athlete and my job is to get you on stage looking the best that you can and my job is to push you to give your 100 percent effort and i have high expectations of myself as a coach and i also have high expectations of my athletes so that being said i'm not the type of coach who yells and uh belittles and shames i'm still here for support but i will be honest uh, so let's say you're getting ready for a show and you weren't exactly staying on track and you weren't ready i would tell you if you're ready or not i'm not going to be like no you're fine you look great like if you're going to step on stage and <laughs> you're stepping on stage under my name i will tell you if i think you're ready or not worst case scenario we could pick a different show to do at a later time um, but it is really important that you show up stage ready as you step on stage this is a sport it is a competitive sport it is not like a participation trophy type of sport so i always expect there to be a level of seriousness that is taken uh, when someone signs up with me to compete in a bodybuilding show so um you know when it comes to just lifestyle coaching um people looking to improve their health maybe lose some weight or maybe gain some muscle um i'm not going to be as uh hard <laughs> i will allow for wiggle room a little bit more balance and moderation and um you know essentially the theme is always like it's okay put it in the past and keep moving forward but it's a little different when it comes to bodybuilding prep because what is in the past is in the past but it still affects the future um because we have a timeline we're on right when you're a lifestyle client there isn't really a timeline you're on your own timeline it's not a race so it's okay if you mess up because you can just keep moving forward but with bodybuilding it's very calculated so there's less uh wiggle room for messing up for sure and i always say like you know with lifestyle clients i always say you know don't go have the all or nothing mindset or you know this isn't about being perfect but when it comes to uh, bodybuilding athletes i always say D you can't necessarily be perfect but i want you to try as fucking hard as you can to be perfect and that's what i do <laughs> i have this saying that's like every every grain of rice uh to the last grain because i weigh everything out when i'm in prep religiously to the gram to the one gram one gram one grain of rice it is all weighed out because it's the one thing i can control right so that's the thing that i focus on and i make sure everything is weighed out precisely when it comes to lifestyle clients it's a little different maybe you're like five grams over on the rice not a huge deal uh so i just wanted to differentiate a little bit between just regular lifestyle um, general fitness clients versus bodybuilding clients um if you've competed before you probably are going to know and you know personally ha have your own personal experience with the things i'm going to talk about but if you are new and you think you want to compete in bodybuilding either this year or in the future 
Um, I'm gonna give you the unfiltered, sugar, non-sugar-coated version. So here we go. So prep. How far you start out depends. Um, how much fat are you carrying around? If you carry around an, a, like a good bit of extra fat, earlier the better. Just start. Um, you know, if you're decently lean, then you can start a little bit later. I feel like the perfect amount of you know when to start would be around 16 weeks. Gives you enough time. Um, you know, to like if there is anything that pops up, you know, usually there's enough time to like pivot. Um, 20 weeks is definitely good too, but I like to reserve that for folks who, you know, maybe went a little too far on the bulk during the off season. Um, sometimes you can even do more. That's why it's like, you don't want to put on too much fat in the off season. You can only gain so much muscle. Um, so putting on too much fat in your off season is just going to make it harder to prep and get that fat off of you when you're ready for a show. So although bulking does require some fat gain, don't take it overboard. It will just make things harder in the long run. So even bulking is calculated. It's not something that's just like eat everything in sight, eat, eat everything in anything. It's just, it's not like that. Health still matters in a bulk as well. And the better your body is functioning and the healthier you are, the better results you're going to see. So food choices are still important. Um, along with stress levels and sleep and all that stuff. So prep, uh, so let's say we start out 16 weeks away from the show. You're gonna expect to kind of titrate up things like cardio um, and then also simultaneously dropping calories. And this is something that is adjusted weekly to the point where it gets, let's see, so like when I did my prep, uh, I think the lowest my calories got were about 1,400, and that was on my off days, off days from the gym. And uh, I think I'll just go into a little bit about my prep, just so you get an idea of what it might feel like. So started my prep 16 weeks out. Started out pretty, pretty chill, 30 minutes of cardio. Um, I also like to set a step goal because you want to get a base level of activity because our bodies are pretty smart. The lower body fat we have, the lower, less calories we consume, our body starts to adapt in ways we don't even notice. It's pretty subconscious. And that could be by not moving as much because your body is like, we're going to preserve energy. So you, you tend to fidget less. You get up less often. You don't move around as much all of that contributes to like your calorie burn. So if we set a step goal, we know that you're at least going to be burning roughly around the same calories from when you started prep towards the end. And having that activity level stay the same is really important so that there's no mystery of like, okay, we dropped your calories, but you're not losing any more fat. What's going on? If we didn't have a step goal, it's probably because it's like, oh, you just stopped moving. You're not stepping as much as you used to. Um, so Usually there's a step goal on top of some designated cardio. For me, that was the treadmill, but I had to switch to elliptical because my knee decided to swell because I'm an old man. See all the injuries, but there's usually always a way to pivot. Um, and that moved to uh, an hour of cardio every day, which I would not recommend. I think that really kind of fucked me up. <laughs> Usually, uh, you know, there's at least one day of complete rest, and I did not have that for a really long time, up until two weeks out. And um, I got pretty sick because I had a, a UTI. My immune system was probably pretty shot. I wasn't sleeping well. I had hardly any body fat. I dropped about 10 pounds in a week, uh, mostly water because my calories got slashed pretty quickly and uh i was feeling it like my body felt so heavy my legs i felt like i couldn't hardly lift them to walk and get up the stairs it was bizarre i've never felt that type of exhaustion before and i've done a few preps before but this last one was especially brutal i don't know if it's because i was older or just because i wasn't given enough rest um so I always recommend at least one full day of rest and prep, and that is what I do with my athletes. But I was doing uh, 60 minutes of cardio every day um, on the elliptical or treadmill, keeping my heart rate above 120. And uh, then I was doing the steps and my usual workouts. And 
I will say like it doesn't you you send you tend to be pretty focused in the beginning and it doesn't really get hard hard until I'd say about like six weeks out maybe eight depending and it's about that point where you start to like get overwhelmed with feeling hungry um, you should expect to feel hungry there's nothing you can really do about it there's a lot of things in prep that you just have to accept and uh, basically it's just a whole lot of discomfort and you have to kind of make friends with the discomfort and I always like to see it is like a spiritual journey it does test you it tests your limits and how much discomfort you can handle and it also builds your tolerance to discomfort so I'm always thankful for prep. I always feel like I come out stronger in the end because I'm like, I can tolerate so much more afterwards because everything else just seems so easy once it's done. <laughs> You're like, as long as I can eat my food and I'm not feeling hungry and tired, life's all right. There's not a whole lot to complain about. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely just know that bodybuilding takes things to the extreme. It is not your usual just weight loss journey. It's going to be really uncomfortable. You're going to be really tired. And there's no listening to your body as much in prep because your body's going to tell you to stop basically every day. But you really have to turn that switch and then just tell yourself, like, you're fine, but you have to keep going. And that's part of the discomfort in learning how to push through. Um, so expect that, you know, you're going to have times where your body's going to tell you to rest and to stop but like <laughs> that's just not really the there's you know you know allowance for rest in prep but you still gotta check off all the boxes uh there's not just a random like oh i'm just not feeling it today so i, I think i think i'm gonna take a rest day like that's not how you handle prep how you handle prep is i'm tired i'm exhausted but I'm going to go do the best I can anyways. And then that's another day checked off, another day closer to the stage. And um, there's nothing like feeling, uh, you know, like you gave your 100, 110% when you get up and you step on the stage. You know if you left no stones unturned as you are posing on the stage. I know I personally know. And regardless of wherever I place, if I know I didn't give my 100%, then I am not going to be feeling good about pretty much anything because bodybuilding is a subjective sport. So in my head, I'm winning as long as I did everything possible in my control to bring the best physique to the stage. So that's just something that you kind of have to remember that, um, you know, don't let yourself get caught up in comparing to other people because you really are just there to bring your best physique because you are being judged but it's subjective. So that's like the other crazy making part of bodybuilding that you basically have to torture yourself to be just judged um, <laughs> subjectively by, you know, judges against others. But uh, yeah, so sorry if this is a bit rambly. Still a little bit of a brain frog. Brain frog? I have a brain frog. Okay. Um, <laughs> so bodybuilding. You're going to have pretty extreme, uh, you know, low calories. This is where you start to kind of get really creative in the kitchen to find a way to keep yourself full. Shit gets weird. You kind of get into weird combos with things that you will definitely not continue to eat past prep. It's just basically you're starving and everything tastes good. <laughs> um, but um, you also have to stay pretty rigid with your routine. If you're going to, you know, <clears throat> if you're going to be starting prep don't plan like three vacations during your prep that unless you want to not show up your best like also reminds me you have to make sure your partner is on board um they need to know the reality of what prep uh consists of because it could be just as much of a surprise for them so you know my partner does she actually has been through a prep with me before so she knew what to expect um but she's super supportive and understanding and then you have to get creative sometimes of like how to have you know quote unquote date nights um but we would kind of just we would eat at home because <laughs> i'd have to make my meals and then we'd still spend time together and i think that's the thing that we emphasize the most it didn't matter where we were it just mattered that we got to spend time together 
So that might be a conversation that you need to have with your partner. You want to make sure your relationships are solid because they're not going to get any better in prep. Sometimes relationships don't even make it through prep because yes, it is that hard. And if you are someone who's used to going out to eat a lot, um, maybe that's how you and your partner connect and bond. It's going to be tough. You're going to have to figure out a different way to bond and spend time together. So whatever that might look like, maybe just going to the movies, but it's going to smell like delicious popcorn, but don't eat it. Okay. Um, maybe you could go mini golfing if you have the energy, um, you know, or you could compromise with the, uh, meal at home and watching Netflix, um, and just being happy to be in each other's presence and spending time with each other. But just make sure you're on the same page before you get started with things. Um, because it can be straining on relationships. I'm really lucky to have someone who I feel like is just as excited and supportive of my goals as I am, um, which is very rare, um, and I definitely don't take that for granted. Um, But you do need to have that conversation. Another thing to make sure before you start prep is that you're not going into it with an already very, very stressful life. Like if your work schedule is all over the place, um, maybe you're not sleeping well. Maybe you've got just a lot of life stressors going on. I would not recommend going into a prep if you're already stressed as fuck because it's only going to magnify your stressors. So make sure you have your ducks in a line. Your relationship needs to be solid. Um, Your stress levels, you know, a little stress is unavoidable. But just make sure you're not so overwhelmed that you're you're about to have a mental breakdown even before you start prep. (laughs) Um, Another thing is be prepared financially. Uh, bodybuilding is not a cheap sport because you have to pay for you know coaching fees and maybe you need a posing coach as well um, but also you got your entrance fees you've got your tanning fees your food and supplement fees it's a lot of money that goes into it a lot of money oh yeah, and then like your trunks um, those are expensive and if you need to get them tailored um, all depending on what division you're in so definitely a lot of expenses which can also be a stressor so save your money (laughs) make sure you've got a good amount saved to put aside and able to enable you to be prepared for any expenses that come your way during prep you know sort out your relationship get your stress levels down book some massages during prep um, because that's one way to cope outside of food to bring your stress down Hey, you can even do a double date with a massage with your partner. I feel like that's a great way to connect and spend time together and and relax and it's outside of food. So those are like the three major things to make sure you have in place before you start the prep. I am all over the place with this. We're going from starting to middle. (laughs) Oh, sorry guys. But so more about when you're in like the heat of prep just know that you have to make things not optional your cardio is not optional eating your food hitting your macros or eating on meal plan whichever is not optional and you have to also remember that you signed up for this no one is forcing you to do it bodybuilding doing bodybuilding is a privilege Like, there are starving people around the world, and you are purposefully starving by choice because we have that choice. So when I say it's a privilege, that's what I mean, to purposefully and strategically starve in order to look a certain way. Like, that's that's privilege. So you have to make sure that you are in prep with a certain amount of gratitude. And, you know, just just check yourself sometimes if you're feeling sorry for yourself because you're hungry and you only have X, Y, Z to eat. Like, nah, you you chose this. You need an attitude adjustment. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's hard. And there's going to be moments that you want to just break down. Um, But you really have to keep putting things in perspective. So that also being said, (laughs) if you want to find ways to not annoy your your coach, um, when you're given something, don't try to... Like if I give you a certain amount of macros or a certain amount of cardio, uh, don't try to like MacGyver or, you know, hack your way into getting something you want. Uh, Like if your biggest goal as an athlete is to take what your coach gives you and like basically doing the bare minimum (laughs) of what you're assigned to like check that off, you also might need to check your attitude. Like is your heart really in it? 
Um, Because if you're trying to find ways to create shortcuts within this prep, you you do need to ask yourself, like, is your heart in this? Um, uh, Just because, you know, it it is a hard sport. It's an extreme sport. And if your heart is in it, you're going to want to show up and do your best and not try to negotiate with yourself or your coach. Um, So those are some pretty big things to, to consider and remember. Uh, It's all about perspective and the best feeling, you know, especially if you've never competed before, I will tell you that getting to the finish line, you know, being on that stage and presenting all those weeks of hard work is really just is priceless. All the expenses, all of the discomfort, when you make it up there, it changes your life because you did something that you never thought you were capable of. And there's probably many times along the way where you question if you're going to make it or you're just like so damn uncomfortable you wanted to throw in the towel. So when you do actually make it up on that stage, make the most of it, (laughs) try to stay present and know that like the day of the show, all the hard work is already behind you. You know, you're ready. You show, show off all that hard work. Try to have as much fun as you can. I know... (laughs) I can't say that I enjoy the stage part as much because I'm very socially anxious. I just like the um, competition of it. So when it comes to social anxiety, the only thing that like I can overcome social anxiety with is competition. That's the only thing that will get me to like <laughs> put all the anxiety aside just for the sake of like finishing what I started and, and competing. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, (sighs) there's not really much else I can say about the bodybuilding prep is just, I just want, if if you're new and you're thinking about competing this year, just know it is going to be hard. Nothing about it is going to be easy. So just make sure you're prepared for how hard it is exactly. Um, you know, you have to find new ways of, if, you know, food is a way of coping. Uh, when you're feeling a certain way, you're going to have to find a new coping mechanism. It, it really does show you a lot about yourself. So you always come out of it learning a lot. You can come out of it a lot stronger as well. Um, I, <laughs> I, I do like to say, like, I wouldn't just do a bodybuilding show because you wanted to get in shape. Um, you can do that outside of doing a bodybuilding show and, uh, bodybuilding does, I mean, depends. It can have like negative impacts on your relationships with food and relationships in general. Uh, if you let it, it can affect your life negatively, but it doesn't have to, as long as your head's in the right space and you know what you're getting into when you enter prep. Um, But just don't enter it blindly thinking it's all fun and games and it's going to be a piece of cake because it's not. I also want to remind you that bodybuilding prep is not the pursuit of health. (laughs) It is extreme. You're pushing your body to the extreme. And I don't want anyone to ever think that bodybuilding in and of itself is a pursuit of health. It is not. It is a pursuit of competition. And you do go to extremes in order to, you know, do your best and place your best and all that. So those are the biggest differences. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, we could talk about like, so it gets hard around, like I said, the eight week, six week mark. And that's where you really have to start digging deep. Um, you have your peak week, depending on how you've done can be a little bit better because you start to you know get some more food in your body because you're filling up the muscles for show day um but i yeah no i think we don't have to talk about all that i just want to i wanted to get across that bodybuilding prep is not is no joke and if you want to compete you have to expect it to be hard so that's the main thing that i wanted to put across out there because it is about to be you know there's a lot of shows that start in the fall and prep for that will be starting here very soon um i know specifically there is a trans bodybuilding show that is in november this year 
Um, so if you're thinking about competing uh, in the trans bodybuilding show or an MPC show, um, just know that prep starts early. You don't want to start prepping in October if your show is in November. When I say like 20 weeks, 16 weeks, like the, the, the shortest prep that I would ever would like to see would be 12 weeks if you're starting out already very lean. 12 weeks is cutting it, all right? So expect a long prep um, and uh, start start soon so you don't get on stage uh, looking like you woke up and decided to do a bodybuilding competition that day. <laughs> all right, so I think I'll wrap it up here. I'm still not feeling so great, so thanks for hanging in here with my rambles. Um, but, um, uh, pray for me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep you posted on like the shoulders and, and the back stuff. Hopefully I survive. Um, I'm still not sure if I'm going to be prepping. Uh, if I, if it was like a perfect world, what I would love to do is to compete in the same show that I did last year, requalify for nationals and then do the national show the week following. That's basically what I could have done um, last year, but I just wasn't prepared for it. And I knew that I wasn't big enough to be competitive um, nationally, so I didn't want to go, um, you know, drive down to Los Angeles, eight hour drive the next week um, when I was already feeling pretty, pretty sick. I, it was a tough prep, like I said. I got a uh, UTI that was pretty gnarly because my immune system was shot. Um, I had a fever. I felt awful. I was nauseous. Um, luckily, my partner um, made me go to urgent care. And then I got on antibiotics and I started feeling better. Uh, but then I threw my back out. <laughs> it was painful. <laughs> had to get my knee drained. Uh, so it was an all around awful prep. So even doing nationals a week later, I just in my head, I knew I was like, I don't think I have anything you left in me. And that was kind of like a bittersweet feeling because I knew that I gave it everything I had. Um, but I also knew <laughs> that I was just tapped out and, uh, I don't think I've ever like met my limits in that way. Like I did that time. So yeah. Um, so I would love to compete this year and then requalify for nationals. But uh, there's a little bit hanging, a little bit of a mystery depending on the injuries, the shoulder specifically. Um, but also, you know, I also have a coach um, because, you know, even coaches have coaches because it, you know, helps me to be able to do my job and not have to focus on coaching myself. Uh, and so I'm just kind of, following his guidance and letting him kind of guide me and do you think I'm ready to compete nationally? Do you think I'm not? And uh, if I'm not, then I'm just going to take more time to grow. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to hang this up. But thank you so much for listening. If you are planning to compete, yes, I do. I do coach. Uh, I do prep athletes. So you can uh, send me an email if you're interested. Um or I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> um, but it also just know that expect it to be extreme and make sure you've got everything lined up for yourself to make it as smooth as you can um, because it's going to be a rough ride. All right, guys, that is it for this week. Thanks so much for listening. If you have any topics, suggestions, etc., cetera, um, if, you're on, if you're watching on YouTube, leave them down in the comments. I leave it a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you have the time and you are willing. That helps me out a ton. Um, but yeah, hit me up if you uh, are ever considering coaching. All the info will be in the description. But I will talk to you next time. Peace out.